Hello everyone, my name is Jenny Burak and I am apologizing first of all for this going out so late. Um, I was ready to go last weekend and I felt fine on Saturday. I felt completely, I didn't have any symptoms of anything or didn't feel tired. Uh, actually left my house and did something fun and I woke up Sunday morning ready to do the Emerald Fire meeting and realized very quickly that that was not going to happen. Uh, so my plan was to get this done a week ago. And as the week has gone on, the video has gotten longer and longer. So we'll see um, what I'm able to cover. I have so much to share with you. Uh, I want to say welcome to everyone who is here for the first time and welcome back to everyone else. I know that all of us are going through something or another right now. I'm sp speaking to clients this last week uh, who are having serious like shifts and changes going on, um, trying to get their footing and uh, you know have some balance and stability in their lives. And that's the energy that we're contending with. If you have not had that experience so far, um, it will be coming. So uh, all of us, everybody, everyone who is not aware of what's happening and everyone who is, is dealing with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. They came together just about last February, February of 2019. And then Saturn went into his retrograde and now is coming back up to meet Pluto. They're just about at the conjunction that will perfect on January 12th of 2020. And um, before we get too much further, I do need to go over some admin. And I didn't mention it in the last video. Uh, I don't know why, but it just didn't come to me. But I spoke about having a Christmas special. And so it's been on my website for a few days now. Uh, normally, what I do in sessions is when I do the natal chart readings, uh, we're dealing with like subconscious stories that you came in with and that you are living out until we can clean that up for you. Uh, so what we do is we go through the chart and talk about it's a give and take a conversation that we have together about how these experiences have shaped you um, from what it tells me in the chart that you've experienced. And then you share with me uh, the details of those stories and at the end of the reading then, Metatron and the creator will remove the stories from all of your bodies. So the physical body, there's DNA changes, uh, physical healings, and um, then there's also, you know, the subtle bodies and all aspects and all levels of you. A lot of things that we're unaware of, you know, that are going on in the subconscious mind, which governs about 95% of what, how we act, how we react, uh, the plans that we make, beliefs that we have, they, it really shapes us, the subconscious mind. And so we go through and we pull out everything that no longer serves you. And I witness that. We do the healing with the soul family in relation to that. And then an attunement with Metatron. And uh, so that's for the initial session with me. Um, and so I'm having a sale because a lot of you will do a session and then buy one for your daughter. That's a lot. That's typical. Or a husband or a child or a sister. So I thought at Christmas I would do uh, buy two and do this buy one and get the second at half price. So that is on the website, astrologyforascension.com. And then for the packages, like when we go through and we remove these stories, it really is like a huge weight that will come off of you. Um, and then there are things that we need to go back and take a look at, right? Like I always tell people, uh, it isn't like we don't have one healing session and then we just ascend like Buddha or Jesus and we're done. Uh, so we go back over and look at what is happening like a lot of times people that book packages will say to me um you know i don't really have anything happening everything's great and it is and then um metatron will bring up some like huge thing that they've been carrying around for hundreds of years uh that wasn't even like currently they they didn't recognize that how it was affecting them and so that's what we do in the follow-up sessions 
So I normally have that for four sessions for $222. And at Christmas, it is five sessions for $222. And if you don't want to buy, do the, you know, buy one for one person and then uh, yourself, you can keep both of those for yourself if you do the, the package of two. Or I guess it's not a package, but it, they say Christmas special on the website and everything that you need to know about me. Well, maybe not everything, but if you need to book an appointment, if you'd like to make an appointment, um, you can find that information in the description box below the video. And anything else that I've talked about in the video is also there. And all of my social media contacts is there are there as well. So, okay. Thank you for letting me get that, get that, th get through that. Um, I was feeling a lot better, honestly, yesterday. Uh, but I really, you know, all of you who have toddlers will understand, or if you've had a toddler, when I wake up in the morning, I immediately, you know, start taking care of someone. And so it's tricky to find the balance with that. But I mean, apparently this is the time that I need to get that nailed down. My son this year is intercepted in the sixth house of health. And so I'm, and, and that's self-care, the sixth house as well. Like our daily habits, our daily routine. So I am restructuring uh, so that I'm bringing the focus to myself first and then caring for everyone around me. And I feel like this is a story to share with you because of what is happening with Uranus about a month from now. Uh, Uranus is in Taurus, the physical body. And as he begins to station, as we come into the new year, and he begins to station to move forward on 111, the 11th of January, in a four year, which in numerology, Uranus is the number four. So, or the number four is Uranus. Um, anything that you have been neglecting in the physical body, we spend a lot of time in the spiritual community um, with astral travel. And, you know, I've shared on before that that's something that I've done since I was an, a baby and remember uh, always doing that my whole life. If I wake up and I don't remember what I was doing overnight, then that's a heads up to me that something is amiss. Uh, that I was probably doing something that maybe I, I wasn't the best idea for me to be doing. Um, but we we forget the physical body, and it's just as important. Um, you're higher, you cannot fully integrate the light body and the higher self unless we're paying attention to how we're treating the physical body. And that includes any kind of exercise. I know that a lot of you have um, physical limits to what kind of exercise that you can do. But we need to all be moving our muscles. Really, in this period with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, please be careful lifting things. Please watch your back. Try to be very careful about, you know, not stressing your back right now. Um, those of us who are carrying responsibilities for other people in a way that is not in alignment in like from an ego place because we're a place of fear is what Metatron is saying. Um, those that kind of story is going to become very apparent now. So really being careful. I know it's the holidays, and of course you know we indulge a bit more then. But just overall, if there are things that you needed to, you've known for a while that you need to do this and this and change the way that you're eating, you know, maybe something, cutting something out of your diet um, that is just better for your physical body. But the vibration of the the light body and the, the higher self cannot be like come fully into the physical body until our physical body is in alignment. Um, it isn't just about the spirituality, you know, it's the Pisces Virgo access. That's the story. Bringing spirit into earth implementing spirit on the earth or in the in the physical and so as uranus begins to at the beginning of the year i wanted to make sure to say it in december to give you you know a lead time um for making implementing those changes okay so um anyway let's get let's get to the full moon in gemini uh gemini is ruled by mercury uh, the sign of the twins 
and it represents like the higher consciousness and the lower consciousness. Mercury rules cycles. Mercury is a very important guy. When I was going to do, or I, I think I'm going to still be working on the video, uh, Metatron, the expression of God, it relates a lot to Mercury. Mercury is the planet that close that is closest to the sun, travels with the sun, brings us the messages. The, the messenger of the gods is how the ancients referred to him. Um, a lot of teachings of Toth, of Hermes, are from the Mercury, okay? So um, we want to be, and Mercury also rules health in Virgo as well. But in Gemini, it's the higher self and the lower self, like where, what is happening with the mind. And we've had this long, 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 long extended season of Scorpio happening. Mars, Mercury on the 9th, which is tomorrow, probably the day that this video will go up. Mercury will move into Sagittarius, but Mars is still in Scorpio talking to us about what is happening in the deep subconscious mind. And, um, you know, this is so this is all working together to kind of bring up whatever, bring up from the roots is what Metatron is saying. Anything that we're holding on to as a grudge uh, when we someone did us wrong and, you know, I always talk about with my own story with that, uh, how I finally gave up, gave to the creator some grudge that I was holding. And if I told the story of what had gone on between myself and this other person, you would, and, you know, anybody would say like, wow, you know, of course, of course you had a grudge against that person. But I, you have to, we need to come to a place where we're seeing things from the higher perspective and re realizing like in cases of divorce or when anything was done that was unfair in relation to money, when someone abused their power over us in some way, that, that was, there was a reason that that happened. And the only thing that can hold us back right now is holding on to that grudge is not allowing ourselves to forgive that person. That person is a soulmate. That is a member of your soul family. And you ask to have that lesson for whatever reason. And there's always different reasons for that. And these are things that we, you know, why we do healing sessions. Um, I do them quite a bit myself because there are things that we aren't, we don't know consciously, but there is a reason that those things have gone on. Um, and so we want to be sure to, that we're coming from the higher, uh, vibration. We're seeing things as our higher self. You are your higher self incarnated on the planet. Everyone is the higher self. We all are born with the wings and the reptilian energy. We've all got the angelic side and, um, the reptilian side in every moment we are choosing where we're coming from and that is happening because of our thoughts uh manly p hall uh said that success of a man and i'm not going to quote this right but it's basically that your life is determined the quality of our life is determined by our thinking okay and i know it's been very easy in this past couple of months and, and, and still moving forward to look at the lower, the lower, like, woe is me. Why is this happening to me? Or why did that happen to me? Why is it okay that that person did that? You're not going to be able to, we cannot break free of those stories if we're still holding on to them. It'll just come about through someone else. So um, this is really at the this full moon as we're moving into eclipse season and already in the 2020 energy pretty much. Now when I'm seeing that, I'm seeing other uh, timelines wrapping up. But, you know, we need to be able to move forward in it with this new vibration, okay, of light where we recognize that everything that has happened has been a lesson for us in whatever and how that lesson was brought about is not always going to be in a kind way. Um, now that we're more awakened and enlightened, we understand that we can have those lessons come to us peacefully and in a without drama and chaos. 
but there could be a bit of chaos because Uranus is very involved in what's happening and Uranus relates to chaos. So a lot of times, you know, when we're in a place for too long and, and especially in a relationship for too long, things can happen that are disruptive that kind of throw us off kilter and it takes a while to get our bearings and a job or, you know, whatever situation it is for you. But um, what we're talking about coming up, moving into this, uh, this full moon and then for the next few months, we're going to be dealing a lot of issues with finance, finances, uh, resources, and then uh, relationships and anything that is out of balance. Um, anything that has to do with an abuse of power, an authority figure, or someone who you've looked up to or you've counted on, um, you looked up to for safekeeping, Mother Mary is saying, or that you've looked up to as like an external authority. Um, if that person has is abusing their power over you or in a marriage situation where there's one that kind of rules the roost and the other one, it just kind of goes along. Um, and there's like a just dis, there's not a, a dysfunctional relationship happening that will be come to an end, okay, over this next period. So let's talk about the full moon in Gemini. I guess I don't really need my glasses, huh? Okay, guys. So this full moon is happening in Gemini. And I run the chart for universal time. So you see it's happening at 5.12 a.m. in London, 11.12 p.m. in Chicago on the 11th. It's for us in, in Pacific time zone, Mountain and Central, this will happen at on the 11th. And then Sydney is 4.12 p.m. on the 12th. Okay, so in the universal chart, this is the eighth house. That's Pluto's house. Traditionally, that's the house of Scorpio, and it is on a, the omega symbol is night in a museum. Shadows seem to be moving in the paintings. Whatever you may think of as being dependable and unchanging, you'll eventually find you cannot count on. Now, I believe that that's more when we're relying on something that is, you know, and we're not talking about the creator or, you know, the fact that we're, we are, our foundation is pure unconditional love. But when we are looking to other people for, you know, taking responsibility for us, like handling our responsibilities or, um, and even in a way where someone is, like I said, abusing their power, but those things are going to fade away. Things are not what they seem. If you try to hold on to stability, sameness, and consistency, you will always lose the battle. You need to move with transformations as they occur, Pluto, for this is the key to your personal growth. The Chandra symbol for this degree is a bull stung by a scorpion. The paintings of the Omega symbol are structures which we assume to be finished and unchanging, but the scorpionic energy here brings unexpected change, renewal, and regeneration to these structures. And so the paintings magically mutate into environments where energies can shift, flow, and transform. The truth at work here is that nothing is set in stone. All is capable of being reworked and reinterpreted. Okay? So I know one of you had sent me a message a while ago about Metatron appearing and telling you that you are wrapping up a 35-year cycle right now of karma. And all of us started this new cycle, the Saturn-Pluto cycle, when they last came together in 1982, 1983. So think back, maybe you were born after that too. So this is a whole new ball of wax for you. But think back to what was happening in your life about then. Don't look at like 1982 because these, all of us are on our own personal journeys, okay? So for me, what Metatron was bringing up with me actually started about 1984, but this is the end of, of it for me. And it's going to be different for every single one of us. 
what this cycle is. And so what it means is that, and I'm going to use this chart because it's perfect. Um, when you look down into the second house and you see Venus there, look at from the moon, follow the green line down. You'll see Venus. She is with Saturn, who looks like the H with a cross and Pluto. Okay, so balance, money, and other people. And that could be any relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean a love relationship. But that's where, where there is, I'm hearing a reckoning. Okay, so there's an answering for that whatever has gone on with you in relation to a, a relationship that, and this does talk, this does look a lot like a marriage uh, kind of scenario, but whatever has gone on for you in relationship where you've given, 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 you're one of those that is always giving more than they receive, then that balance needs to be reconciled. It needs to be something of a firm foundation moving forward. This isn't going to be something that's instantaneously happening. This is going to play out over 2020 for sure. When we look at the astrology of 2020, it's a four and it's about getting the structures in order, changing something, coming up with a new innovative way to handle resources or to be in relationship with others that where there's a balance. And like I said, the only thing that can hinder our progress here is holding on to resentment or to grief is what Metatron is saying. If there's like mourning for past relationships, then that can hinder as well. And like, you know, the unfairness of it all. And I know, I mean, I can, like I said, I could tell my own stories about things that have gone on that were unfair, that looked to be unfair from the human perspective. But there is a reason that that happens. We're not just here. We don't know always like what's happening in other timelines, what that relationship is, or if we're the one in a position that of, of power that is taking advantage of someone else. But it's important here that we remember not to martyr ourselves. You've got the sun. If you look at the red lines, the sun and the moon, the sun facing the moon, illuminating the moon, bringing the full moon. And then at, in between them in that square is Neptune down in the fourth house. Okay. So the fourth house now in the mundane chart, I just want to mention because Nessus abuse um, and also wrapping up a karmic cycle Neptune, Black Moon Lilith, and Chiron. In the mundane chart, the fourth house relates to climate change. So it does look like we're going to be contending with um, a lot of water, but then there's the, the Aries fire in there as well. So uh, that could just be the ice caps melting. We'll see how that pans out. As I said before, you can't say when something will happen, when a planet will go by, uh, where those planets are right now in the sky and tick off that energy and start like sort of a chain reaction. Um, we can't really like specify a date for that. But also Neptune and in the fourth house, we're talking about emotion. So this could be where there's a lot of confusion, sorrow, if we aren't careful with what we're doing with our mind with how we're we're seeing the big picture, the overview. Neptune relates to spirit and all that is. And you as a spark of God in your higher vibration. And so we want to be careful not to be caught up in the past, you know, like things that have gone on that have hurt us deeply, but expect and welcome. Welcome is what he's saying, being open to allowing um, time, he's saying, like sitting in uh, meditation and allowing situations and circumstances of the past, most likely related to childhood, that have come up that have hurt you. Let that go. Allow that to go. And allow yourself forgiveness. Forgive yourself for when you were in that position of the nurturer or the authority figure. Uh, because that whatever experience you had you gave that experience to someone else. 
So allowing yourself forgiveness for when you played that role of the one who has victimized you in some way so that you can just be finished with the whole story and not have to replay it until you finally can come to a place of forgiving yourself. Another heads up to that energy of the nurturer is if you look in the second house again in Capricorn, you'll see the south node that looks like a U. It's right with Ceres, who is the sickle, and Ceres relates to nurturing and food as well. So I would not be surprised if maybe some people find out that they have some intolerances or decide to make a shift in what they're feeding themselves right now because the second house does deal with food as well. Um, but it's, it's going to be speaking to us a lot about who that was, who that figure, that nurturing figure was that you have. And I always find it interesting almost, almost every time that I do a reading, the first thing that they'll draw my attention to is the relationship with the mother because that's, that's our foundation, how we were nurtured and how our needs were met in the first like six, seven years of our life informs the rest of our life if those needs were not met. And a lot of times people are hesitant to go there because they don't want to say anything bad about their mother. The mother understands, the higher self understands that you asked for that experience that that was the soulmate that you went to and said, could you give me X, Y, and Z as your as my experience and I'll give you X, Y, and Z. And that is something that, you know, you come to long before you incarnate that the, you know, the soul family decides how this is going to play out because all of us are going through these same stories until the healing is finally done. Especially if it's a case when where a mother has left the planet, people are really more hesitant. Um, I once had someone that was so triggered about it that they demanded a refund. And I, I didn't know better at the time I gave it to them, uh, which negates the healing because, you know, there has to be some kind of energy exchange. But... Um, and they did, like, admit that the mother had abused them, but they felt so guilty that they had brought that up, that they couldn't live with it, that that had gone on. So really, you know, we, we need to get that fourth house, that broken heart in order. Because if that broken heart is there and you aren't filling the spot of the role of the nurturer as an adult now for your inner child that leads to then depression or any kind of addiction. Workaholics, okay, people that have to work and work and work just so that they're never focused on healing their broken heart. They have to constantly be busy so that they're just not thinking about it, keeping that at bay. That's why the Scorpio season has been going on for so long up until this period. It's still going to be Mars isn't leaving until January 3rd. So during the eclipses then, he's going to move into Sagittarius, but we we all are being called now to look at what is happening in the psyche. Where was your heart broken? Otherwise, we're going to fill that void with work, with weed, with liquor. I mean, you name it, you know, sugar. Um, because until that fourth house and that eighth house, the Scorpio house, aren't dealt with, we can't come into the twelfth house of knowing the fullness that of the creator that we are on the planet. There's still going to be a story of separation in the psyche until the broken heart is healed and the psychological damage is healed. And no one outside of you can do that for you. I always tell people, you know, in healing sessions, when we go, we remove these stories, that then it's implementing the healing. You know, it can't just be like, um, you know, it's marked complete. It's going to, the creator wants to be sure, your soul wants to be sure that you've learned that lesson. So it's really focusing on our inner child and feeling the need that the inner child was taught was not valid. Until we do that for ourselves, we keep looking outside ourselves for other people to fill that need and they can't fill that need. You know what I mean? I had uh, someone bring up a question about a relationship where they were always giving and giving and giving to the the spouse. 
and expecting the spouse to change their behavior and give back. If you aren't giving to yourself, number one, if you aren't treating yourself as number one and giving and doing for yourself and devoting time to yourself every day, no one else is going to. They're always going to disappoint you that way because we really have to show ourselves that we're the most important thing to us so that everyone else can treat us like we're important to them as well. The partner's Venus is always the reflection of us. That's why in tarot, you know, people say, watch your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. And I think that sometimes they think that that's because it, Venus is the planet of love. It's because Venus is the other, the one that's reflecting you to you. That's why in partnership, even when it's a marriage that's sort of turned into a friendship now, that partner is still reflecting to you what you think of yourself. And when you're being treated like you're not worthy, like you're not desirable, like you're just the maid or you're just, I used to say, filling a space in the in the relationship or it could have been anybody standing there. It's because we don't think that much about ourselves. We're not paying attention to our own needs and focusing on our own needs. And that's really the only way to make it through without going into the spiral downward in these energies, okay? So it's really great news that we're wrapping up the cycle from 1982, 1983-ish. But we, in order to move forward then, we need to put new, um, he's talking about implementing new habits of showing yourself that you're devoted to yourself, um, making yourself the top priority, okay? Um, and then that's how we can climb the mountain, Capricorn. Capricorn is the master. That's where our mastery comes into play and we leave our legacy on the planet. Our mark on the planet is when we're completely healed and we are devoted to our own growth. And then we talk about how we're going to serve others and what it is that we could do on the planet to make this a better place. A number one, the physical body and devoting time and energy and effort to yourself. And a lot of that is just in having fun. It isn't in watching YouTube videos or um, reading. It's just having a good time, just dancing. You know, I always ask to be guided with my Spotify. Um, and it's funny, the songs that they'll come out with, it was Kiss by Prince today <laughs> because they knew I would dance. So, and that's what I needed, you know, to get my energy moving um, today so I could do this video. I also want to point out Mars there is in the 12th house um, at the Ascendant, hidden. He's in that blind spot that we can't see. So that's where, like, you're, you see how that's follow the blue line, that the long blue line that goes down to Neptune in the 4th house. Mars is the self, and he's in Neptune's traditional house, the 12th house. And so it's going to be something that comes to you, some knowledge from your higher self, from spirit, that that you'll be able to recognize, maybe something that is hidden from yourself. When we have placements, especially the sun or moon in the 12th house, we, it, we, do, we can't see ourselves. We're not seeing ourselves. Or if you have like Mars in Scorpio um, intercepted or any place really that Mars is intercepted or if Mars is aspecting the south node is with the south node, we aren't seeing it. We are not seeing something about ourselves that's crucial because Mars can be very painful. Um, you know, he's got that sword. And if you have him aspecting your moon at all, that's a broken heart or in the fourth house, especially, you know, with the south node or aspecting the south node from there, that's a broken heart. So just expect that, you know, something inspirational will come to you to help you to move forward, Mars, um, in this full moon. Uh, interesting, too, that Mercury, you see him there at the beginning of Sagittarius with the little antennas, and he's in a King Kong, that green line that goes over to Uranus. Uranus is where we find, like, the Awakening Code, the Soul Family, Uranus, uh, in the sixth house and still retrograde there and intercepted. So that could be something that comes to you, a realization that comes to you that rocks your world. Um, and, you know, I've talked before about 
uh, Venus and Pluto and how that can be something that was hidden, maybe of infidelity or something with money even. But something will come to you for your healing, for your betterment. That is a revelation, okay? So just trust and believe that that's going to happen. That also tells me that soul family most likely is going to be showing up. Um, if you're asking for help with things, please be open. Make sure that your heart is ready for a soulmate to come in. They, can't, they come as pets. They come as friends. They come as partners, co-workers. Uh, you never know. You never know if you're going to turn on something on YouTube or a podcast and hear some from one of your soul family members exactly what you need to hear. Uh, it can come about in very funny ways. And then also we've got Gabriel with um, Pallas Athena, the goddess of wisdom. And they are at, uh, oh my goodness, the great attractor in Sagittarius, the great attractor that they don't know why it goes on for, you know, uh, light years and it pulls in other systems to it. So that's fantastic. And that's in the house of self, the first house. So listening to your own inner wisdom. And Gabriel, I always think of as the messenger. So something, a message coming in and your own inner guru. Okay, that also speaks to being very strategic right now in your plotting. Uh, Mars and Scorpio plots. Um, your plot going forward. Uh, how it is that you're going to implement your newfound schedule of self-care and then move yourself forward into this next cycle. When they showed me what it looked like uh, with this cycle coming to an end and another cycle beginning, it literally, it wasn't, it wasn't like watching a different channel. It was like watching, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. Almost like a different kind of television set. It when they this is how they showed it to me. It, it it's hard to even describe. It was like a completely different scenario. It's sort of like the old going to the side and then the new. And remember, that's going to keep going on through 2020. That that isn't going to be like something very quickly that happens. You know, I know in my for my own. Um, what's happening, the big change going on with me requires like paperwork and government, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to be something that I can just do a healing for. Uh, I, you know, there, I have to do actual physical things on the planet and, um, you know, getting my daughter's adult paperwork done to get that, that ball rolling and until it, it completely wraps up for 2021. Um, and one of you, Renee, <laughs> one of you had shared that with me as a confirmation because I knew that that was true. And then she told me something and I was like, oh, I already knew that. So good kudos to Renee. Um, and yeah, really being open to listening to what is coming up because this is going to be something with the eighth house moon. It's going to be something coming up from the depths of the psyche. I also wanted to talk about um, that the nodes of fate now have moved into the first decan of uh, Cancer and the North Node and then the South Node Capricorn. So all of the signs are broken down into three decans or decans um, and they're each ruled like sub ruled by another planet. But in the, the first decan now, it's going to be straight up Saturn and straight up Moon. Okay. And with where the North Node is, the moon, you know, that's where the moon rules. That's the inner child. Um, that's our childhood, our relationship with the nurturer. So uh, really our focus is there now until the nodes move then into Gemini and Sagittarius about the middle of next year. I just want to mention in relation to, I don't know why you're bringing that to my attention. Okay. Um, uh. So I also want to point out, thank you very much, Metatron, uh, that Chiron, you see him there in the fourth house, again, of emotion and the inner child is if you follow the red line from Chiron going over to Jupiter, who is with Pholus, Jupiter looks like the funny number four and Pholus is, I say when I do readings that it's what comes back to bite us in the ASS. For those of you who have young children who may listen, 
Um, but it also speaks to the ending, something ending. So Jupiter, whatever he is with, he blows that up. He magnifies whatever he, he is closest to. Chiron is going to be stationary, direct at the time of the full moon. And when a planet, we've talked before about when planets are stationary, when they're, you know, stopped to move forward or stopped to move back, which is an optical illusion, but it feels like that. It feels as if they are stopped. That's when they are the most potent. Okay. And it is a full moon of, that's going to be, emo, full moons typically are emotional anyway. So really important um, music, Mercury. And Metatron has really been driving this home with me. And I know I've talked about it several times before. I got a beautiful gift last night uh, in relation to music. He, There's a song that was, it's by a Christian artist. And, you know, when I went to Africa, I was there on a missions trip. So we had like one secular tape. And then we had a lot of uh, Christian tapes, cassette tapes, for those of you that don't know what a tape is. Um, and... So I listened to the song. It's an instrumental. And I love the song so much. I went to sleep. The girl is my my best friend from Gloucester, uh, who I met there in Africa. And then my other very close friend, who is from Zimbabwe. Uh, we used room together. And I used to... They didn't mind because the song is so beautiful. And every night we would go to sleep listening to that song playing over and over. And um, I couldn't find it anywhere. Of course, I got rid of the cassette tape years ago. And I lament. I mean, I, I bring it up to them a lot. Like, oh, I wish I had that song. And last night he said to me, I don't know why I never thought of it. But he told me to look. He was like, just Google. And I found it. And it reminded me of when I'm listening to it, I'm 20 years old again. And I'm imagining what my life is going to be. If find that song. Find that song that that is filled with so much promise is what he's saying. Um, sorry, I'm a, I'm emotional because I got a little fever going on, but that makes you feel hopeful about the future. You know, this is not easy to work with. This is not easy. You need to have things that inspire you right now. Listen to music. I saw someone else who I know Metatron has him. He's a, a Reiki master on Facebook and where we only know each other there. I don't even know how I found him, but um, it, cause it's not like a business page or anything like that, but he always has the most inspirational quotes and pictures. And he had a post up this week and I know Metatron was drawing me to it. That said that 78 minutes of music a day is what we need just to maintain a healthy vibration. So devote that to yourself. Give yourself, he said 90 minutes, actually, Metatron, 90 minutes a day to just let loose and um, fall in love with your favorite songs all over again. And be, in, you know, feel inspired, sing, dance, do whatever you need to do to get yourself out of the funk. Because if you haven't been in the funk, um, the funk is coming. So really keeping your vibration as much as you can doing things that make you happy, mercury, movement, exercise, rhythm, cycles. I'm going to make a separate video. I thought about doing it on this one, but I know this one is going to be pretty long uh, because I actually, Metatron showed me how to move a timeline, which I've never done before. Um, I, I've always done astral travel and I work with time all the time. I mean, when I say I work with time, I'm a Scorpio and I'm typically running late. And so I, I work with time in that I go into the creator's energy and I say, please, time, if you could just slow down for a little bit while I'm driving, that would be great. Or speed up. And I, I do both to make sure that I'm, you know, in integrity with it. I give it back when I've used it. But um, he was like, well, all you got to do is just go a little bit higher and you can do the bigger stuff. So, um, and that's not something like if we're in a session together, he'll bring that to my attention if there's something that I can move forward or move back for you. But that isn't something that I can just willy nilly go up there and change time timelines. Oh, the world would be a mess if that were true. Um, but because <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. Uh, but yeah, that that's something that I'll make a separate video about. But Mercury and Saturn work together 
in um, cycles and time, time like on the planet and time is a restriction, and then cycles of humanity, uh, Mercury, that move us in whatever direction we need to be. Um, so when we're looking at like Jupiter moving into Capricorn, which I'm not going to make a video about, remember that Jupiter is in his detri in detriment. In Capricorn, he likes to expand and have fun and tell the truth. And in Capricorn, especially when you're dealing with the South Node in Capricorn, that's not so much on the agenda um, right now. When when uh, Saturn and Pluto come together on January 12th, Jupiter will be on a fixed star that we'll talk about actually coming up. But Jupiter in Capricorn is the long haul, the long like taking the, like getting all of our ducks in a row. Saturn wants structure and he wants us to have a good handle on exactly what steps we're taking moving forward because it's something that is going to be lasting. Something of integrity, Metatron is saying, that is going to be lasting. So Jupiter does push integrity. Um, and, you know, people can be cynical uh, with Jupiter and Capricorn, but we're not going to look at it that way. We're going to look at this, you know, bringing up a whole new phase of um, truth in government. I, I think a lot of this is going to relate to church because it's like the establishment Capricorn. So it rules all kinds of um, institutions, banks as well. Um, and, you know, I put a post up about the fact that we've stopped feeding now 700,000 more people in this country because all of our taxes, if you don't live in the United States, you may not realize that most of our taxes go to the, um, the in military industrial complex. Um, that's why fear constantly is pushed here because, uh, you know, if we don't keep people in a state of fear, then they won't be happy to give their taxes to military spending, which doesn't go to the soldiers. It just goes to mass weapons manufacturers, multinational weapons manufacturers. Um, and so with Jupiter and Capricorn, we're talking, it, it, that also has to do with when you look at the Saturn, Pluto, um, conjunction that also deals with taxes and government spending and secret ways that they're spending it as well. But with Jupiter aspect in Chiron then, that can be a lot of emotion. Um, Aries is like the, the child of the Zodiac and Chiron is there. Also the masculine um, and all of us are the masculine and the feminine. And so Expect that a lot of these healings will will relate in a lot of ways to the masculine. Um, I'm waiting for him to tell me because I, I kind of got lost in what I was saying about Jupiter. But Jupiter in Capricorn uh, relates to legal issues, legal matters. Uh, I know one of you had spoken to me about something happening um, in like following up in a uh, divorce situation. So that could be, you know, that rest like financing, financial stuff being straightened out in, in that kind of like legal matter or inheritance, um, can be coming up as well. But when we're talking about Jupiter and Capricorn, it really is about, uh, instead of the cynical, like I'm never going to get there, just recognizing that these next steps that we're taking over the next three months, okay? And really the next three months, what I saw with a client yesterday in relation to what was happening with her and then what he's been talking to me about since then is that for the next three months, a lot of this is going to be where we're just letting things fall away. And if we are starting something new, it being like a very well thought out, um, way that we're going to move forward, not just willy-nilly jumping in there. Uh, Mars is going to enter Aries at the end of June of 2020, and he is going to stay in Aries until January of 2021. And Mars is our get up and go and going forward and moving. And I mean, that's that could be it's just a long, a long start. Okay. So like I said, 2020 moving forward now, um, when, with the eclipse is coming, we're really just allowing these old stories to fade out is what he's saying, fade out and, um, coming into something new. 
So he gave me this song this morning. I think I've actually used it before. I also want to mention just that, you know, Mercury moves into Sagittarius on Monday on the 9th. And Mercury in Sagittarius is all of those planets that I showed you. Every single planet right now, except with the exception of Neptune um, and Chiron, which isn't a planet, they're all answering to Saturn. Saturn is, I mean, not only are most of the planets there in Capricorn, but they're like the Sun answering to Jupiter and Capricorn, Mercury answering to Jupiter in Capricorn. So it's all about Saturn right now. Uh, and that, you know, Saturn wants us to be confident and to take our time to have well laid plans is what Metatron is saying. But Venus will move into Aquarius then on the 21st of December. And then Venus and Uranus will be in what's called mutual reception. So we could see maybe it, that, I mean, that could be more climate change. Um, but yeah, so, and then the new moon for those of us, Central Pacific and Mountain Time is going to be on Christmas. And for the East Coast, it'll be in the hour of the first hour of the 26th and for Europe and uh, Australia as well. So here is our song for Jupiter and Capricorn and moving forward and through 2020, where he will be most of the year. It's The Climb by Miley Cyrus. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lots lost with no direction. My faith is shaking, but I got to keep trying, got to keep my head held high. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, Sometimes might knock me down, but no, I'm not breaking. I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm going to remember most. Yeah, just got to keep going. And I got to be strong. Just keep pushing on. Because there's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. And sometimes I'm going to have to lose. It's not about how fast I get there, not about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. And that's really what it's all about. You know, we go through highs and we go through lows. It's it's what is happening in those moments. That's life. And it again, I'm reminded of the client who went into the past life where she had been a priest who devoted his life. He was a good man. And she was, she was crying so hard because when he passed, he realized that he spent his whole life trying to be perfect and working out all of the things that he could do and doing and doing and not enjoying the moment and being incarnated. You know, there's so much that we have to be grateful for. There's always opportunities coming up and, you know, connecting with soul family and, and enjoying just this morning when I was saying in the shower, I was, I can't remember what I said to him, but he said, like, just feel the water coming. Like, doesn't it feel good? And I was like, yes, it does. I'm in the moment right now. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do after this. I'm just here and now. And I'll, I have to do that. I have a lot of mercury. I have a very strong mercury and Gemini rules two of my houses. And I have to say a lot of times to myself, I am here and now. I am here and now. You know, the world is the way that it is because of your, you are in it and because of what you're seeing in the world. It sets the tone for it work. We all work together in that way in creating our reality. So, okay, guys, we're going to keep focused on uh, enjoying every moment and devoting time to ourselves, listening to music, dancing around our kitchens and uh, just enjoying being incarnated. That's why we came here. Right to experience joy and to be joy, to share that joy with others. 
Alrighty, so I, I'm going to say I'll talk to you guys next week. Everyone take care and hang in there. Sending so much love to all of you. And I hope that um, a lot of you are able to take advantage of the Christmas special. And I will speak to you in about a week. All right, bye-bye.